Hello, in this video we're talking about quantum tunneling, one more crazy thing in the quantum world where stuff can um, teleport through walls. That's basically what it is, more or less. So here we go. Uh, all right, we're gonna start off talking about something called a potential barrier, which um, is something that uh, we're very used to. This is a totally normal, happy, classical mechanics thing that we can totally do. Um, all right, it basically just means there are places where, sometimes there's places where a thing can't be because it doesn't have enough energy. Yeah, of course. So let's picture our classic ball rolling up a hill. This is a good uh, picture of what's going on here. So I have here a ball on a hill, and I want to try to roll it up the hill. Um, the thing is, it might make it, it might not, right? It depends how much energy I give it because the ball would need a lot of potential energy to be up here, right? That would be a pretty high gravitational potential energy to get up to the top of the hill. So if I don't push it hard enough, if I don't do enough work, if I don't give enough energy, the ball might just like kind of go up a little bit and then come back where it was. Yeah. Um, if it doesn't have enough energy. Thing is, the poor ball doesn't know that it would be perfectly happy to be over here. In fact, it would like it if I draw it like this and the hill is even like goes down way over here. It could even get more energy by rolling down this hill. It'd be so nice if it could just make it over there. I could just kind of bring it over here and it could roll down and go even faster. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, so there's a little pesky barrier gets in the way and stops it from uh, getting all that energy it might, it might like to have, but it doesn't know any better. It doesn't have enough energy to make it. All right, well, in the quantum physics world, this thing would like roll up the hill, I'd push it again, I'd roll up the hill, I'd push it again, I'd roll up the hill, I'd push it again, and it'd teleport through and go over here and then roll down the hill. Uh, okay, that's quantum tunneling. Why the heck does that happen? Because remember, there's no such thing as like a particle being at one space, really, really. Everything's a crazy wave function. So really, I would define the location of this here ball in the quantum world with a wave function and say, well, like, well, the ball's probably here. It's probably rolling around here. So like the wave function has a pretty high amplitude here. Um, and it's not allowed to be here, but it is like allowed to be over here. I mean, the rules of physics say it's got enough energy to be, say, like there. So the wave function has a value here. And the thing is, the wave function is continuous. So if the wave function has a value here, it can't just like stop and then start again. It's continuous, so it's going to kind of do something like something crazy like this. Um, so there is a value for the wave function anywhere that the thing is like math allowed to be. And because it, the wave function will still have some value on the other side of this barrier where it's not allowed to be, um, it can jump, right? It can just kind of say, well, the this, this wave function is just where is this thing most likely to be at any given moment in time if I were to, to detect it. Um, and that's what this tells me. All right, so it is continuous. It is small. It does get way smaller over here. Um, all right, the math of this is beyond what we're going to worry about, but you do need to know just this, all right, what affects how likely something is to tunnel and the likeliness that the amount that this wave function gets squished down by basically on the other side of the barrier Depends on two things, the mass of the barrier and the size, like basically how wide it is. You can think of it that way. All right, so mass and size. This is why the ball in our, you know, macro world will never really roll to the other side of the hill because it's way too big. Um, and there's way too much stuff in there, like by an unfathomable amount. Okay? You can do the math and there's a probability and it's truly statistically impossible. Um, the probability is so small that it will never happen. Uh, but inside of a nucleus or, you know, talking about really, really small stuff in the quantum world, this does happen a lot where, you know, we're dealing with quantum sized masses and sizes and stuff. All right. So that's the idea. And we'll look at some examples. Here's another picture of that same idea, wave function, where there's some kind of barrier here. And the idea is on the, this, remember the, the height of the wave function, the amplitude, really the amplitude squared. Right, so the, the value of the wave function squared, we should say, tells me something about the probability. So like, okay, whatever this thing is, I'm pretty likely to find it here. I'm pretty likely to find it here. Um, but because the wave function is continuous, even though it's like not allowed to be, um, doesn't have enough energy to be in this barrier, there is a good chance that I'll find it here. Smaller chance, but a chance. Right, so that wave function is continuous and it exists on the other side of the barrier because the wave function exists over there. It could just show up there at some point. Okay, that might sound like mumbo jumbo and like stupid weird stuff physicists come up with for fun, but it is real. And we know it's real because uh, we wouldn't be here to talk about it if it weren't real. Because the sun wouldn't work. The sun wouldn't work at all. Um, so this is one of the biggest things about quantum tunneling. The, one of the biggest, like, uh, I guess, applications or fun facts is the sun is really, really hot, but it's not quite hot enough. Um, at least if just like the Coulomb 
equation was the only thing going on. Um, uh, so remember fusion, the idea is two, let's say protons, or, you know, there's different types of different kinds of hydrogens smushed together and make helium is the uh, fun beginning version of fusion. So let's say I have two protons coming careening towards each other inside the center of the sun. How fast they go depends how hot the sun is. The sun is hot, really hot, um, but it's not quite hot enough. So what happens is these protons come really close to each other and then they go, I hate you, and they repel and push away from each other because there's a force, right? There's a repelling force um, between the two. They're both positive charges. There's a barrier here. There is a potential barrier here because of this Coulomb uh, repelling force. The barrier says, you know, they, they don't have enough speed to get over the hill, uh, so to speak, and they can't get close enough to each other. Well, they get close enough that their wave functions say, yeah, you could be a little past that barrier, though, and you can get to this point where the strong force is going to take over, and then they could get to that point, and the strong force would take over, and they'd smush together. So just with the rules of classical mechanics, uh, these two things... These two protons should not have enough energy to get close enough for the strong force to take over. But every once in a while, two really nearby protons just decide to quantum tunnel into each other. And then we get fusion, and then the sun makes energy and shines light, and like the planet grows life, and uh, here we are. Yeah, so uh, quantum tunneling is why fusion happens inside of the sun. Because uh, the sun is too small to do it if that wasn't a thing. All right, uh, this is a big thing in the tech world too. Transistors are a really, really, really big part of the miniaturization of technology. There's a thing called Moore's Law, which talks about how technology is like, you know, getting rapidly, rapidly smaller and smaller. Um, but there's a limitation. Transistors are a big limitation because we're making them so ridiculously small now, these transistors, which are a fancy electrical component, that the electrons are not staying where they need to stay. This is starting to become an issue, and we're gonna we're basically starting to push up against this issue where we're gonna start making transistors so small that the electrons will just decide to pop outside of them or pop to different spots in the circuit or transistor where they aren't supposed to be, and then your thing doesn't work and you know run electricity like you want it to work. Um, so we're really having to design and engineer around this uh, and think about different ways of doing things. There are some microscopes and diodes that use quantum tunneling to take measurements. Um, we won't get too into that here. Cognity has some great stuff on that if you uh, want to look and read it. And quantum tunneling explains how alpha decay happens and why is alpha decay probability based? Why can you never predict when an atom will decay, when a nucleus will decay? Well, quantum tunneling is why, because it's all wave function stuff. All right, so here's just two like graphs of examples. Uh, this is showing the fusion thing. So this is showing two, um, you know, hydrogens trying to fuse together. And um, let's say, you know, I've got my hydrogen here. I've got my hydrogen here. These are officially energy versus distance graphs. So remember, these things aren't literally rolling up over physical hills, but um, the math analogy is a really good one. So the protons, let's say, in the sun only have enough energy to get about here. They can only roll up the hill about here. There's a really big positive energy. Remember in our field stuff, that means they're going to push apart. Um, they're really, really, really repelling each other. If they could get to the top of this hill here, they'd really be repelling each other a whole lot. The protons don't like know, so to speak, that um, if they could just get over that hill, there's a big, beautiful, deep well here that would be so comfortable. They could just smush together with the strong force. Yeah, like if the proton made it over here and the proton made it over here they'd fall down the well near each other the strong force would take over the nice attractive strong force and they could stick together and live their life as uh, helium very exciting all right but they don't have enough energy to do it uh, but it doesn't matter because the wave function says like yeah okay well you're most likely to be here but you could also kind of be over here like this would be fine and so um, every once in a while, their wave functions overlap in a way where they can just like pop here and pop here and tunnel through the barrier. And there you go. Now they're close enough. They smush together. Uh, helium is formed. Difference in binding energies is released as energy. Lots of energy comes off of fusion. Light shines. Things are good. All right. So quantum tunneling is how protons smush together in the sun. Bigger stars do, some bigger stars do have enough mass to do this just on their own, but quantum tunneling helps anyway. All right, and alpha decay is another one. Here's a kind of similar picture for alpha decay. So we're picturing down here a nucleus, and the nucleus, all the protons and neutrons in the nucleus are happy with their negative energy, meaning they're stuck together. They're down in the bottom of this, like, let's call it a strong force well. 
uh, instead of like a gravity well like we're used to, but they're nice and nice and held together by the strong force. They're very happy uh, because the strong force is nice. And there's if they wanted to, if you were a proton stuck together in this nucleus and you wanted to pull yourself out, you have to crawl all the way up this hill because it takes so much work to overcome that strong force to pluck yourself out and then roll down the hill to the point where, hey, now I'm repelling, now the strong force is over, and now I remember I hate you, uh, and it rolls down and gets pushed away, right? Um, so what it is is same deal. There's a wave function inside, and any given you know nucleon is going to have a really big value of the wave function inside the nucleus because the strong force is there. It's most likely to be there by a lot. But there is a chance it's allowed to be further outside, and so there's this barrier where it doesn't have enough energy to just like pull itself away, but it can just kind of teleport after a little while. Yeah, and so this is why it's probabilistic because um, the wave function is a probability thing, right? Remember, the wave function squared tells us something about how likely it is to find a particle at any one point. So it's not super likely, but there is a chance that you can find an alpha particle that's bound in the nucleus some distance away from the nucleus. And every once in a while, when the dice roll just right, this guy goes, oh, look, I'm here, whee, and it flies away. And that's what alpha decay is. So even though it's bound by the strong force, it can tunnel away to a point outside of this barrier where it doesn't have enough energy to be and go flying off, and so you get this decay. All right? And this is why we can't predict when, say, alpha decay will happen because it is inherently at the fundamental nature defined by a probability math function. Crazy, but true. Here's a fun uh, animation. There you go. There's your alpha particle. Hey, he's free. All right, this is quantum tunneling. This is a picture I have in your head. It's not allowed. It doesn't have enough energy. It doesn't have enough energy. So the rules of statistics and probability and the wave function say, ah, yeah, you could be there right now at this moment. All right, and if it makes it out, it makes it out, and there you go. It just decayed. All right, so there you go. There is quantum tunneling. Uh, it's a fun one. There's not a lot to know for the EB exams. It's mostly a knowledge thing. Know about that whole size of the barrier, mass of the barrier makes it less likely to tunnel through and just be able to describe what it generally is and you're good to go. All right. So have fun.